we're asked to find the points on the cone z squared equals x squared plus y squared that are closest to the point two comma negative four comma zero. To do this, we will be using the distance formula between two points in space given here, but let's first look at this graphically. The cone is graphed in purple, and the given point is this red point here. Because we're looking for the point on the cone closest to this point, one way to find these points would be to draw the shortest possible segments from this point to the cone, which are graphed here in blue. We know these segments are the shortest segments from the point off the cone to the point on the cone, because notice how the segments are perpendicular to the cone, which means we're looking for this point and this point on the cone that are the closest points to the given point. And again, to do this, we will use the distance formula between two points in space, and we'll find the x, y, and z values that minimize this distance. So going back to our work, the given point gives us x sub one, y sub one, and z sub one in the distance formula. Performing these substitutions give us d equals the square root of the quantity x minus two squared plus the quantity y minus negative four squared or the quantity y plus four squared plus the quantity z minus zero squared. It'll be much easier to determine the values of x, y, and z that minimize the distance if we don't have this square root. So the next step, let's square both sides of the equation. This will give us d squared equals, squaring the right side will undo the square root, which gives us the quantity x minus two squared plus the quantity y plus four squared plus z squared. If we find the values of x, y, and z that minimize d squared, they will be the same values that minimize d. But to make this equation look more like a function that we're used to minimizing, let's let d squared equal f. This gives us f equals, and now let's go ahead and expand the quantity x minus two squared and the quantity y plus four squared. The quantity x minus two squared is equal to x squared minus four x plus four. The quantity y plus four squared is equal to y squared plus eight y plus 16. And because we want f as a function of two variables, not three, we will now make a substitution for z squared. We know the values of x, y, and z are going to be on the cone given by the equation z squared equals x squared plus y squared, and therefore, we can substitute x squared plus y squared for z squared. This gives us plus x squared plus y squared. And now let's simplify the right side. We have f equals, we have two x squared terms, we have two y squared terms, and we have two constants. Simplifying gives us two x squared plus two y squared minus four x plus eight y plus 20. Now remember our goal here is to minimize f, and therefore the next step is to find the critical points. These occur where the partial of f with respect to x equals zero, and the partial of f with respect to y equals zero, or where the partial derivatives do not exist. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant. The derivative of two x squared with respect to x is four x. The derivative of two y squared with respect to x is zero. And we have minus the derivative of four x with respect to x is four. And the derivative of eight y and 20 with respect to x are both zero. So we set this equal to zero and now find the partial of f with respect to y. To do this, we differentiate f with respect to y treating x as a constant. The derivative of two x squared with respect to y is zero. The derivative of two y squared with respect to y is four y. Minus the derivative of four x with respect to y, which is zero, plus the derivative of eight y with respect to y, which is eight, and the derivative of 20 is zero. We set this equal to zero and solve the system of equations. But in this case, this equation only contains x, and this equation only contains y, and therefore we solve the first equation for x, and the second equation for y. Solving the first equation for x, we add four and divide by four, x equals one. 
In the second equation, we subtract eight and divide by four, y is equal to negative two. So now we know the critical point is the point one comma negative two. The next step is to perform the second partials test to determine whether we have a max or min value at this critical point. So here's the second partials test. We now must find the second order partial derivatives. To find the second partial with respect to x, we differentiate four x minus four with respect to x, which is four. To find the second partial with respect to y, we differentiate four y plus eight with respect to y, which gives us four. And to find the mixed partial, we differentiate the first partial with respect to x with respect to y, which would give us zero. And now we find d, but because we use lowercase d to represent the distance, let's go ahead and use a capital D. So d is equal to the second partial with respect to x times the second partial with respect to y minus the square of the second order mixed partial, which gives us four times four minus zero squared, which is equal to 16. So because d is positive, and the second partial with respect to x is positive, we know that f has a relative minimum at the critical point one comma negative two. We're looking for the point on the cone in three dimensions, so we're seeing to go back and find z, which are the values of z that satisfy the equation of the cone, which is z squared equals x squared plus y squared, which gives us z squared equals one squared plus the square of negative two, which gives us z squared equals five. Taking the square root of both sides of the equation, we have z equals plus or minus the square root of five. So as we saw graphically, there are two points on the cone that are closest to the given point. One point is one comma negative two comma the square root of five, and the second point is one comma negative two comma negative square root of five. Now that we found the two points on the cone that are closest to the given point, we are done with this question. But let's also show how to find the minimum distance between the point and the cone. To do this, we go back to the distance formula where we had d equals the square root of the quantity x minus two squared plus the quantity y plus four squared plus the quantity z minus zero squared. And then we substitute the coordinates from the two points that we just found on the cone. Performing these substitutions give us the square root of the quantity one minus two squared plus the quantity negative two plus four squared plus plus or minus the square root of five minus zero squared. Simplifying, this gives us the square root of the quantity one plus four plus five, which gives us the minimum distance from the point to the cone as the square root of 10, which is approximately 3.1623. If we go back to our graph one last time, we have now found these two red points on the cone that are closest to this point not on the cone, and we also determined the minimum distance from this point to the cone, the length of these two segments is equal to the square root of 10. I hope you found this helpful.